for those of you who've forgotten what 4.30 a.m. looks like, it looks like this. Penny and Kate take their time to drive me to the airport to get ready to go to Croatia. You may be wondering why I'm flying to Croatia in the first place to pick up a plane. There's a few reasons for this. Most of all, it came down to the value of the aircraft, the best value of the aircraft. I was specifically looking for a Cessna 152, something that had been well looked after because they are getting reasonably old. In this case, we're looking for something younger in the line of the 152s as well. So a 1980 152 is where we ended up. The outright cost was within our budget and it had a solid history with all of the logbooks dating back to its first release back in the US when it was registered under an N number. From there, it made its way over to Austria and then into Croatia. So we have all of the details on that, which is actually something that's very important to me. Also, we had an airworthy aircraft ready to go, and it was under a camo, which for those of you who aren't used to that phraseology, it's a continuous airworthiness management organisation. So basically what that means is there's somebody who's consistently looking after the airworthiness of the aircraft, and that had been the case for quite some years since, uh, realistically, the aircraft arrived here in Europe. Additionally, the VAT, the taxes, had been covered on top of what the base price of the aircraft was. Now they'd been paid previously when the aircraft made its way into Europe. In the particular case for the Netherlands it would have actually meant an additional 21% tax on top of the purchase of the aircraft which is a significant increase in price I'm sure you can imagine. So how did we choose this plane? Well we'll cover this in a future video including all the costs associated with it and the buying process and also what it costs to register the aircraft and all of the process involved in getting it onto the local Papa Hotel registration tail number. It was a little bit more difficult than we were originally anticipating and you'll hear me talk about this in this video saying that it's about a month. In fact, it ended up taking us about three months to get this done. The other question that might come to mind is you'll see here that I'm using a ferry pilot, in this case, Pilot Bambi. Why am I using a ferry pilot? Well, at this point, I'm actually not certified, finally certified to fly this aircraft. So I was still working on that. Although I have a helicopter rating, I don't actually yet have a fixed wing rating. So I was working on that as we were going through this process. Now for those of you who aren't aware, perhaps what a ferry pilot is, it's somebody who you can hire to bring your aircraft from one location to another. How did I choose a ferry pilot? It's a bit of a funny story actually. Originally I was trying to find somebody to ferry the aircraft and in fact I had been watching Pilot Bambi's YouTube videos for some time. And I flicked on YouTube and up she popped and she was talking about how she was ferrying an aircraft from one location to another and I thought, well, why have I not asked her to ferry this aircraft for us as well? So that's exactly what we did in the end and, um, you know, to the benefit of everyone, I think. What makes a good ferry pilot? Well, I think for me, it's somebody who's, who's actually quite knowledgeable about what they're doing, has some breadth of experience and also somebody who's willing to make some concessions as an example, allowing me to actually travel along with her all the way up, which I'm not sure she really enjoyed the entire journey because I didn't really stop talking or asking her questions. Pilot Bambi, if you're out there and you didn't enjoy yourself, well, sorry, but you know, that's just part of the game. Now you're drifting away Feeling, breathing, hearing, seeing you And I'm holding, touching I'm keeping you far away in my mind You're not fading 
Okay, so the plane is officially ours. I um, didn't manage to get a flight today, unfortunately, but that's okay because we've got a lazy seven hours flying tomorrow to get done. But yeah, we picked it up. Um, Rosita was kind enough to uh, to take it out for a flight, get get herself accustomed to the machine. It's quite chuffed with how he flies so that's pretty cool i'm very excited to get into the aircraft tomorrow morning well, it's an early start unfortunately but early starts at 6 a.m we'll leave from the hotel here we'll jump in the plane at 7 and start flying i'm hopeful we can catch a whole lot of interesting uh, information and data and footage along the way so that i can share that with you i'll also run through the flight plan and how we're going to get there um, also excited about the fact that Rosita has flown through the Alps before. So I was, uh, when I originally did my planning, I was a little bit more cautious because I didn't realize she'd done that. So I'd planned to fly around the Alps, but because she's flown through valleys, not quite the valleys, that's not a fair way to put it, but we'll, we'll be climbing to around 10,000 feet over the, the low parts, which is terrifying in itself. And we'll see how the little 152 goes climbing to that height, uh, quite, quite a long flight before we get to the, the, even the base of the Alps so we'll basically be cruise climbing the entire time till we uh, get up and over. Uh, it'll take an awful long time off our, off our journey. Actually I said seven hours before but that, we'll see that cut back to um, about six hours so obviously the expense that comes along with that as well in terms of the flight uh, costs. We have dinner here tonight at the hotel uh, at around seven o'clock and then call, call it a fairly early night given that we have to be up at, at uh, 5 30. Yeah I'm really excited to jump into him and, uh, and, and take him flying. We've got the key for the aircraft uh, which is currently registered as Niner Alpha uh, Sierra Uniform Ch uh, Sierra Charlie Uniform Sierra, I'll get it right. Uh, Ch so Charlie Uniform Sierra will remain, so he will be re-registered as Papa Hotel Charlie Uniform Sierra when we get into the uh, Netherlands. That will be, like most things in aviation, a, a relatively slow change. It's about a month, I believe, so we'll see how, how whether it takes that long. But it's interesting in terms of the, the money you spend to get a key that looks like this. You know, it's not quite the same as when you buy a car worth the same amount as an example and you get all the bells and whistles. It's been really interesting understanding how many things there are that go into buying an aircraft. I think it's really exciting, but it's fraught with danger if you're not doing the right thing. And, and certainly there's a lot of things that we've gotten wrong. Hopefully this helps you guys in the future. So planning is very important in any journey, especially one as long as this. I was very lucky that I had somebody to help or actually plan the entire journey here. I was really just the sidekick or the autopilot on the way whenever I could step in. And that is Pilot Bambi. Uh, she was very helpful in, in setting this up and giving me the opportunity to actually see how she planned the trip as well. Additionally, she'd already just flown through the Alps a few weeks earlier. so. That gave us the capability to go direct through the Austrian Alps rather than going around. But I'll get into that in a second. Here we are with the outline on the map of the journey that we'll be taking. It is across four countries, so starting in Croatia, across Slovenia, then Austria, then through Germany, then to the Netherlands. With a, with a, a couple of stops along the way, with the planned duration of this about eight hours, seven and a half hours in terms of the full trip. Kicking off in Croatia in a little airport just outside of Zagreb, which is a training airport owned by the current owner of the aircraft, which is a Britina. You can get there, I highly recommend it, mainly because it's in Croatia and Croatia is a lovely country to visit or live. I have spent some time living there as well. So the trip from Croatia will essentially be up through the Alps uh, and then into Vels, 
which is a again a small air airport just outside of Linz in Austria. The most interesting part here is uh, after we get through Slovenia, which is uh, just here with Ljubljana you see in the middle, we get into the Alps, the Austrian Alps. And the Austrian Alps have a very significant uh, height, as you could imagine. Certainly not as high as the Swiss Alps, but not far away from that. So for us to cruise through this will be on a climb essentially to 9,000 feet from the beginning of our journey um, to keep some spacing between us and the, the Alps. And then we'll, we'll maintain that essentially until we get to the end of the, or the other side of the Alps into, uh, into Austria and then descend into uh, Vels. This is the highest certainly that I've flown in, uh, well, in my own aircraft for sure, but certainly in anything that's a uh, th that's a light aircraft. It's the highest I've ever been. In fact, we ended up at about uh, 9,200 from memory was the top of our of our time in the Alps, and it was ridiculously cold up there. So uh, we we traded some clothing to uh, to keep warm. That being me handing over a beanie to keep the shoulder of Pilot Bambi warm. It was a very awesome trip it was very smooth there wasn't a lot of turbulence along the way and I'll show you once we get into the other side of the video exactly what that trip looked like in terms of the post trip information and from there we can step into the next leg of the journey which is less exciting I would say I would say given that it's basically across flat ground but also really interesting to continue through countries into into another one last look around a quick walk through just to remind ourselves how warm the fire was when we were leaving and as the fire started to burn down we started to package ourselves up get into the aircraft and get ready to fly of course going through our daily also doing any of the required checks as you get into the aircraft and we were ready to go so we said goodbye to the fire and started our way home If you're alright with it, I'm just gonna taxi out. Okay, masters on. These are on both. Circle breakers are all in. Let's bring it to 1,700 RPM. Brakes are holding. Max drop should be 125, and the difference 50. Back on both 1,700. It's within limits. Slight drop with the car peats, and back. And we see suction is in the green. All instruments are looking good. No idle cutout, perfect. And then we can taxi onto the runway. Red the radio, 9 Alpha, Charlie Unit from Sierra, taxiing out runway 22. Uh, taxi, pick the line up, 22, Charlie Unit from Sierra. Roger. That's so cute. <laughs> 9 Alpha, Charlie Unit from Sierra, taking off runway 22, they're after right turn inbound whiskey one. Have a beautiful day. Um, uh, have a safe trip home. Thank you. Sure play now. Absolutely. Charlie Uniform Sierra, port requested altitude is 10,500 feet. And 9 Alpha, Charlie Uniform Sierra would like to uh, stay at flight level 09 or 05 if uh, you can accommodate. 9 at Uniform Sierra, 9,500 feet approved. 9,500 feet approved, thank you, 9 Alpha, Charlie Uniform Sierra. You must be getting cold now because I'm starting to get cold. Yeah.
What is the temperature up here? Place C, it yeah. is minus 12? That's cold enough. Yeah. Charlie Uniform Sierra, contact Clagon for Trader 1 to 3 decimal 3 to 5. One of the glorious things about using Sky Demon is you have the ability to debrief exactly how the flight went on the way between locations, and this is something that I think is quite an advantage. For me, the insight I gathered from looking at what we did versus what we planned was really exciting to understand exactly what was going on. So this is a debrief from Zagreb, which is the small airfield that I picked up the aircraft from here, which is Bratina, Lima, Delta, Zulu, Romeo. When we picked up the aircraft from there, the flight was basically as expected. There wasn't really a lot of, of interesting things that were going on, other than the fact that we went over the Alps except for early on in the, the phase of the journey when we were leaving the airspace out of Croatia, the Croatian air traffic controller had been telling us that we actually had a different flight plan filed, which was really interesting to us given that the flight plan that you see is what is laid out here on top of the actual flight that we took. That saw us hold an altitude that was a little lower on the way out until we reached basically the foot, the first foot of some of the mountains we were moving into. And then from there it was a climb, steady climb up until we reached our peak, which was uh, yeah, 9,500 through to our highest, which was around the 9,800, so nearly 10,000 feet. And then a slow descent as we came back into Vels. This was, uh, again, without incident, there wasn't any anything exciting to talk about along the way other than the views well done to pilot Bambi in terms of her really nailing that certainly would not be something that I would have tackled on my own even post my training being finalized it was a lot of fun we burned eight gallons of fuel an hour in this particular journey which was quite a lot given the aircraft POH doesn't really state that but we did climb for a lot of it and we were at high altitude without a lean configuration for most of that as well so running certainly rich a lot of fun really enjoyed it So, such an awesome uh, amalgamation of aircraft here. So after crossing the Alps into Vels, you can see that the next step for us is to take a journey partway across Germany. There's a few little wiggles in this one to get to where we're going, which is this little airfield over here, which is Echo Delta Quebec. Tango. Lovely little place in Germany. Again, if you can get there, I recommend it. And again, the part of the reason for this being the choice is the lower price fuel that we're targeting. To give an understanding of what this journey looked like in terms of altitude, it's fairly boring. It's basically four and a half thousand feet was the plan. The fuel burn in this aircraft was actually quite high for this journey and for the one previous. But the one previous we'd expected it given the climb to 10,000 feet, but in this case 4,500 we'd expected a little lighter fuel burn. That wasn't the case, but not a real problem. We still had plenty of fuel of course when we got to the ground, but something that you need to keep in mind when planning long distance journeys like this, that the P 
POH may not necessarily represent exactly what the aircraft is using. We made the choice not to lean, I should say, <laughs> Pilot Bambi made the choice not to lean the aircraft on the way over the Alps for, I, I consider, a reasonable reason, given that she was unfamiliar with the aircraft and wasn't familiar with how well the aircraft would lean um, without potentially having an engine stumble, which is not something you want when you're uh, in the valleys above the Alps. So this one was a little bit more straightforward. So a reasonable cruise across the bottom half of Germany and then into uh, Hasfurt Schweinfurt. Now I know I'm totally butchering that. So I'm sure some of my German friends will reach out to me and remind me of how poorly I pronounce that. That's okay, we're, uh, we're still learning. And in fact, along the way, one of the things I realized is that I was uh, unable to pronounce some of these locations appropriately enough for the air traffic controllers to understand where we were going, which is why it's always good, good to come back to the phonetic alphabet and, and use the uh, ICAO designators for each of these airfields. Clear prop. She's like ready to fly. So, 9 Alpha Charlie Uniform Sierra on the apron. First flights from Vels to Echo Delta, Quebec, Tango, 2 PAB. 9 Uniform Sierra, taxi to holding point runway 26 right via Bravo and Charlie, QNH 1022, report ready for departure. QNH 1022, uh, taxi Bravo Charlie to holding point runway 22, and we'll uh, report ready for departure. Uh, and can you please open our flight plan later for 9 Alpha Charlie Uniform Sierra? The next part of the journey was from Vels to a hard to pronounce Hasfurt, Schweinfurt. Again, this went without a lot of change from what had been planned. Certainly there were some small altitude deviations, but the majority of that was really just to keep ourselves occupied along the way. Again, lovely flight straight through using a little less fuel than we had previously in the climb over the Alps but still a little more than what the POH suggested. So that's something that I'm going to have to address with this aircraft. There was uh, not a lot of deviation uh, horizontally from where we were headed. Again, we were headed out of Austria into the bottom part of Germany. We really enjoyed the flight. Again, nothing terribly exciting to report other than some deviation here around, uh, not surprisingly, some little glider friends that we saw there that were launching and then really just tracking through until we got to uh, Echo Delta, Quebec Tango, which is Hasfurt Seinfurt. It was an awesome little airport to visit. We had a great conversation with the, with the people at the tower and there was obviously you know, some costs associated with the landing as there always is in Europe. And it's, we refueled here for the next leg of the journey. And for the final leg of our journey out of Echo Delta, Quebec, Tango, we were headed straight into the Netherlands. Now this journey had uh, one altitude change, nothing major. The pre predominantly we cruised at around 4,800 4, feet 
and then a, a small step down as we got closer into the Netherlands. What's interesting about this is that the Netherlands is, you know, I think globally well known as a, as a location where it tends to rain occasionally. And it was as if there was a boundary of rain or at least poor weather as we got to the uh, entry into the Dutch airspace. It was not too bad. It was uh, certainly flyable and VFR conditions, but it also just adds a little bit of extra workload to your flight, especially at the end of a, uh, of a flight of over eight hours, as it turned out to be. It was, again, a fairly relaxed journey, nothing too, uh, nothing too interesting here other than dodging, you know, a few, uh, few areas that were required for us to go around, um, passing over some known locations, passing through an, a couple of airspaces as well. It was a lovely flying experience. The celebration is yet to begin because we have still quite a bit of work to be done to get the aircraft transitioned across, but the major legs of the flying have been finalised. What is he doing? I think he wants... No, we've got to go this way. Yeah. We're going to go that way. <laughs> what? Yep. That was weird. Very. At a big airport, that would never be. That would never slide. No. <laughs> no, and it probably shouldn't at a small one. No. Not just quietly. Niner Alpha Charlie, uniform Sierra, departing runway two niner. Two niner zero eight knots. Niner Alpha Charlie, uniform Sierra. Ah, beautiful. Nine Alpha Uniform Sierra flight plane open and it was very nice and have a nice flight. Bye bye. Thank you very much and hope to see you again soon. Nine Alpha Charlie Uniform Sierra. Cute. Nugget information, uh, good afternoon, Niner Alpha, Charlie, Uniform Sierra. They're just not happy. Okay, Niner Alpha, oh, okay. Charlie, Uniform Sierra, long information, good day. Um, I see a flight plan from Echo Data Quebec Tango to Echo Hotel Tango Echo. A firm, that's it, Niner Alpha, Charlie, Uniform Sierra. All right, uh, so you are northwest of Hasford, 2900? Hey, so I'm uh, just up and out of House Force, uh, climbing 3,000 feet on a QNH 1019er, and I would like to continue climbing 4,500 feet. Uh, yes, you may climb on discretion, maintain VMC, but you're already outside of my area, so I suggest you to contact my colleague. Uh, frequency is 119 decimal 150. Have a good flight. Thank you, sir. We just tried uh, with your colleague earlier, but we got no signal, so we tried on this uh, frequency. Ah, okay. Yeah, copy. Uh, I passed him the details. I let him know that you're calling, and yeah, you try again. One one nine or one five. Good day. Thank you. One one nine or one one five. Sir, have a nice day. Niner Alpha Charlie. You know from Sierra. Reading you, strength 5, 9 or Alpha Charlie, uniform Sierra. Squawk 4450. Squawk 4450, uh, 9 or Alpha Charlie, uniform Sierra.
now for the final leg. And I can say we were both a little weary when we started off this leg as we had a relatively early start in Croatia. And of course, the flying along the way really does keep you mentally occupied. One of the things I found most interesting about this journey is the cognitive decline that I felt I was experiencing throughout the journey, mainly because I was working a lot harder and certainly outside of my realm of normal expertise. Whereas I think the number one pilot she was very much in control and still very aware of exactly what was going on and, and very planned for the next step consistently in front of the aircraft, which is exactly what you'd hope for for somebody that's ferrying your aircraft. We again had very little deviation from what we had planned for this particular part of the flight. You can see here that we had a step down planned after Dortmund control zone. From there, we actually did end up passing through it and we had a conversation with Dortmund along the way just to let them know that that was going to be the case. No issues at all, perfect flight. The aircraft performed excellently and we had a very happy and joyous touchdown in Niner Alpha Charlie Uniform Sierra's new home base, which is uh, Echo Hotel Tango Echo, which is uh, Devon Tatuka, which is our new airfield that we will be flying out of regularly. So you'll be seeing a lot more of this airfield for a period and I hope to show you a lot more of the Netherlands and Europe as we move forward. Thank you for hanging in there for the full ferry video. I know it was a reasonably long one, but if you like what we're doing, beat that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to seeing you all again soon.